morning guys if you can let me know that the audio and the video is all good then we can get started hey maureen hey luella hey diane tracy sandra peggy hello hey christy nice to see you guys on here sandra can't stay too long i uh, have an early start in the morning that's totally understandable we appreciate the bit of time that you get to join us anyways. <laughs> Great. Okay, so today we are working on the peacock feathers. This is just a print. Um, I think my printer is running out of ink or I've set it too fast. So that's why it's making these lines. But no matter, this was just a, um, a um, color example for me to kind of refer to. But I have my reference on a screen next to me, so I'll probably use that more than... Um, this anyways so the first part of this tutorial that we did a few days ago was on um, selecting a black surface so we all came to the conclusion that we like the um, Mitant's touch black paper the most that is the one that we decided that we liked. There we go. Just trying to position that all good. Try and get that out of the way. Beautiful, is that the top there? There we go. So look how nice and black the surface is. So we decided that the this is the Mitan's Tense text paper. And that had the, the blackest surface. So the most black surface. Um, and then when we applied some color over the top, it had the brightest colors over the top of it. It didn't dull down like it did when we tried the other surfaces that we used acrylic black paint. We used ink and... We use pan pastel and we use pencils. So pencils will work fine um, if you use black as a background with your pencils, but it needs to be around your main subject matter. It can You cannot have an underlay of black pencils on, um, before you apply the subject matter. So it's not like you can take a sheet of paper and cover the entire sheet of paper with black pencil first before you apply your colored pencils. You have to apply the black background around your main subject because it will make the color very very dark and almost sort of muddy gray looking as you apply the colors over the top okay so today we're doing an easy transfer so that we can start doing the underpainting so i've printed this out as a black and white sheet i did enhance it a little bit more um so that i could see see a little bit more but really all i want to do is get each shape of these feathers in so I'm not going to actually do the outlines of these feathery bits. I just want to do those rounded shapes and do the rounded sections in here. Just the main things and so that and then maybe a, a slight indication of where these feathers sort of end and the direction they're going in. So we don't have to outline every single detail that's on there. So I'm going to use a pan pastel to cover the back so the color that I'm using I just grabbed this one which is the thalo green tint thalo green tint um, I think that the the saturation on this is a bit too high just all that down a little. That's better. That's a little better. Yes. So what I can see on my laptop, that seems to be pretty much the color that I'm seeing with my eyes on the pan pastel. So phthalo green tint and a sponge. So I've got a soft applicator sponge here. And I'm going to apply this over the entire surface. 
Make sure I don't get it on my sheet of paper. So I want to mention something just about the times that I start. I sort of, I start when I'm ready. So even though I plan on like some mornings I, I seem to put the video at like 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. my time and then um, I end up starting a little bit later. So I don't want you to rely on when you log into the video, rely on that time. Rely rather on the email that you get because that one I send out myself in half an hour before I am ready to start. So um, if you go ahead of time into the student portal and click on a video that's coming up, that time may change by a half an hour or an hour. It shouldn't change by too much more than that. Um, but just to let you know, so if you want to tune in, I think, I think do most of you log in from the email that you get anyways? So the email would say half an, in starting in half an hour or the class starts in half an hour. So if you do, then that's fine. Just rely on that email rather than um, going ahead of time into YouTube to see the time there because that's the beauty about working for yourself, I guess, is that you can start when you're, when you're ready, when you want to. So I sort of, this morning I slept and I slept so well that I didn't want to get up as early. Um, and I also wanted to meditate a little, which I did, and then it ended up just taking a bit longer so I started a half an hour later so it's just one of those things so Diane says I normally do otherwise the portal okay yeah if you guys just rely on the emails and if you do not receive an email let me know but I think also on the Facebook page I'll let you guys know if it's going to be a little bit later than what the video originally said okay okay so that being said let's get started so I'm taking my pan pastel from the email. Okay, so most of you guys use the email, so that's good. That's fine then. And the time difference really has an effect because I think you guys would log into the portal and you wouldn't see the next day's changes because the time difference is so large so I start my day when you guys start your afternoon um, like later afternoon so then you don't get updates first thing in your morning you get updates later in your afternoon so it's better to rely on the emails because otherwise it, d it doesn't feel to you like it's being updated enough but in Australia time it is it's being updated every morning This is such a nice color. get a piece of tape Position this with the way we want. To about there. This 
Wait, this time I should move my camera. So, we'll put on a timer. I really do feel that when I um, do things in my own time in the morning, I feel way more relaxed and less stressed, if that makes, makes sense. So I, um, yeah, so take my time in the morning. I don't feel rushed or anything. And then by the time I do my live stream, I feel ready and vibrant and all excited about it. Um, instead of feeling rushed because um, feeling rushed can really affect your affect the presence that you're bringing across in the videos affect the feelings that you're bringing across oh, I didn't press record Okay, so just those solid black sort of shapes. Diane says it does to me. What do you mean? <laughs> I think with a delay of time, I, I, you may... I love this method of transferring designs. Maureen says relaxed is always better. <laughs> yeah, relaxed is better. Diane says, being relaxed and doing things in my own time. Yeah, yeah, it makes a difference. So, and I'm not the kind of person that can hide my feelings. So I, what you see is what you get. That's how it really is. <laughs> so I need to, I don't like it when I'm feeling tired or stressed. And so, because that comes across. Which is not what I want. But this morning I feel very, very good. I feel relaxed and ready. Ready to take on these beautiful feathers. that is super super clear so you really don't have to put much pressure at all this paper is gorgeous I'm so glad that the negative space isn't this side because then I don't want my hand rubbing that pigment onto the black so I want to keep the black as clean as possible so this top section here is pretty black, so I need to watch out that I don't sort of mark that black with the hazy pigment from whatever is left on the side of my hand. So I have to put a piece of tissue or cellophane or something down. Well, Jean's asking, does my engraving tool have a sharp point or ball tip? Um, it's got both. So I think it's got three sharp tips and one ball tip. I haven't actually tried it yet. So we tried it on, um, Vinny's got a 3D printer and we tried just sort of not using it to engrave, but used it to sort of clear some of the plastic away. Cause Vinny made a 3D, um, 
print of a Apple Watch and iPhone stand so that the watch, the chargers for the watch and the iPhone are next to each other and they stand upright. So we, we use the engraving tool to sort of make one of the holes for the charging cable a little bit larger, <laughs> but we didn't actually experiment and see what it would be like to engrave it. Um, but yeah, it's got both. It's also got a ball tip. Why do you ask, Majin? Did you get one that has a ball tip and it seemed strange? Peggy says, I respect anyone who is genuine. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. these feathers are actually going to be super easy because you we just have to work feather by feather and it's not going to seem so intimidating because I think you guys in the back of your minds you look at these look at peacock feathers and you're like far out that's way too hard there's just too much going on there but if you break it up feather by feather, then it's, it won't seem that intimidating. Yes, it'll be time consuming because there is a lot of feathers. And if you're doing an image of a peacock with the feathers completely spread out, then that is going to take a while. But if you just work one by one, then it will just grow and turn into a beautiful piece of artwork. Yeah, the printer, the 3D printer is really cool because um, Vinny and I like to play tabletop um, war games, I guess you could call them. So um, it's called Warhammer and then you, you pick an army and you, you have to create, not create, but the figurines, each figurine is unique for... Um, each character in the army and it has its own stats and stuff on how to play but um, just to give you the rundown when you get the pack or you buy a figurine it comes in so many different parts so you have to apply each part like the head the arms the legs the armor whatever it's on you have to apply every individual little part stick it together paint it with a primer and then paint it you know to to make it look amazing and then you have to do that for each figure before you you play the actual game excuse me before you play the actual game and then what's also fun is because you use an you use a big table um it's funny because my art table and the table that Vinny built um, in the other room they're the same but we built it for the tabletop games actually um, and yeah I ended up using one for my art room because we he built it high enough for us to stand and play but this one um, oh, I'd say he built this one because I like that one so much I said this would be a great art table and it will make me stand so Vinny built me another one that I could use in the art room but um, what was my point? Oh, so you use a whole table surface, so you also want terrain. Now, when you buy the terrain, it's, it gets very expensive when you buy all these bits and pieces of terrain. So Vinny um, did some research and we could, it would be way more cost effective for us to print terrain ourselves with a 3D printer. So, um, we have, we've printed a couple of things and you can print so many useful things as well. So like the iPhone stand or um, you could even print puzzles. 
Um, yeah, you can print heaps of stuff with it. It's pretty cool. So it was cheaper for us to print our own terrain than to to buy individual pieces of terrain. So that is why <laughs> the long story on why we got a 3D printer. And Vinny loves playing around with technical things like that. So, whereas with me. I don't know, because the 3D printer is actually made out of 3D parts as well, which is really cool. And then when you get the 3D printer, you still have to assemble that as well. And that is not my forte at all. I am no good at things like that, but Vinny is really good at building things. And he likes the technical things, so it works out cool. We both get to do aspects of what we love. He builds them and I paint them. He paints some of them and his painting's really good. but. He doesn't seem to enjoy the painting as much as he does the building. So I tend to be the one to paint most of them. Peggy's asking, are those the figurines you painted that you put on Instagram? Yes. Yes, they are. So I want to paint, like, I have a tank, a big tank called the Rhino tank that I want to paint. Um, and I have one video on YouTube where I've painted a figurine um, live and it's actually got a lot of views compared to a lot of what my drawing videos do. So I'm thinking maybe I'll add a playlist and from time to time I will paint some of them live too. Because there, there's a pretty huge market out there for people that play these tabletop games and they want to know how to paint it. And with me, I don't paint according to the instructions. I like to paint my own colors. So I literally just pick colors as I go, which I think to some people is pretty daunting because a lot of people seem to want their instructions on how to paint things specifically. So where's my army? It's actually the original colors for my army are red. Um, they, they're very red and I don't know, red sort of chromish color. Oopie. And I decided to make mine green and like copper. So mine's very different to the traditional way of painting. But I love the look, they look so cool. Uh, Maureen's asking, was that the 3D printer behind you the other day? Yes, yes, so that's in the study. Barbara says, hey everyone, I have to watch the next lesson. I'm next door at my neighbor's a Super Bowl party. See you later. <laughs> no worries, Barbara, have fun. <laughs> Marjean says, I want a 3D printer. <laughs> hey, Jamie. Jamie says um, her hubby has three 3D printers. He used to make the filament for a living. Oh, how interesting. I hope he take, makes good use out of all those printers. <gasps> He's printing a working life-size R2-D2 at the moment. That is so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. Well, yes, it takes a long time to print something. Like, um, just the little iPhone stand that Vinny printed took 26 hours to print. So I guess if you've got three printers, you can be printing three different parts of one thing at the same time. So it is useful. <laughs>
Yes, Jamie, post the photo. We'd love to see. That's all right, guys. <laughs> Multitasking is good. <laughs> it's cool. You're making time for your family and you're making time for the art. Why not do both when you can? And just brush off. Whoopsie. Oh, did I give you a fright? I'm sorry. <laughs> mm. So, it seems I'm bound to make a mess on the black background. So, we'll have to see if there's a way for us to erase it later without affecting the black What question did you have about the etching tool, Jamie? Just repeat it, please. I didn't see it.
Luella is saying use a black eraser. I I don't have a black eraser. What if I use the a putty one? Oh okay. So this one is just a sharp point, the etching needle that I use. So before the question was on the, um, it wasn't the etching needle, it was on, it was on the engraving tool. Okay, so I thought an engraver is what was meant but um so my electric engraver has a ball point and it's got sharp ones but the etching tool that i'm using i always use the sharp ones so this one's quite sharp i don't know if that will focus there we go so just a sharp one i don't use the ball tip one You probably could. Now, one thing I would suggest for those of you who are a little bit afraid of doing the peacock feathers is print this out. You can still transfer it the same, but have a grid on it. Because if you have a grid on it, and I showed you guys how to use that with the tips and tricks video, to see how to apply a grid over your work using it's called griddrawingtool.com. And then that way, when you start working, especially on these feathered sections here, you may get confused with the overlapping feathers. They will be good to divide into blocks and work square by square so that you get the look of those overlapping feathers. I might actually do that myself. Thanks, Luella. I'll try. I'll experiment on that other little sheet that we used before. Before I experiment on here. With the best way to erase those marks. Okay, so these ones here. That's enough for now. 
And then I think I will have a, a spare reference with these squares or the grid so that we can work on that. Okay, so let's see if I use a putty, a kneaded eraser, if it would work. I actually have one here that I've never used before. Brand new. So let me try in a section inside that doesn't matter too much. Oh, that works beautiful. That works great. way to make our background nice and black again if we cover it with too much Can you believe I've never used a putty eraser? Um, okay. <laughs> Using yours as blue tech, that's funny. Okay! So I'm wondering if we want to work from this side to this side, maybe. Okay, so I'm going to work from this side to this side, so from left to right. And if I sort of need to find a section, I'm just going to use this print and lift it quickly to check if I'm working on the same area. So that's what I'll do. Um, so let's start with, I'm going to start with these two feathers here. Yes. So let's put in the, uh, I really want to put in those blues. So the pencils I'm using today are the Prismacolor pencils and the Caran d'Ache Pablo pencils. So my polychromo set of pencils, like the majority of those pencils are really smooth, so they're really small. So that's why I'm just using the Pablo pencils because I've got the length of the pencil left. But um, I am eventually gonna have to get another polychromo set of pencils. I really got to cut down on my spending. The last two months I've spent far more than what I've made, which is not good. So I need to be, I'm trying to be a little bit more conservative. Right, so I'm using my Pablo pencils and I'm using my Prismacolor pencils. And let me empty my freaking sharpener right now.
because I haven't used it for the last few days just because I've been too lazy to empty it. See, that just took a couple of seconds. <laughs> Margins, I know I can buy individual polychromos, but I need, I pretty much need a new set. They all very small. No! What are you doing? That's naughty. Sorry. Sorry. That was probably very noisy. Honey, come inside. I can see you. Naughty. She's digging. Um, okay, so blue. Let's see. That, that's the one thing I really love about my Prismacolor pencils is they have the best range of colors compared to all the other sets of pencils. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to use the True Blue PC903. I guess... Maybe I'll see how far I get with just using the Prismacolor pencils. So for those of you that don't have the oil-based pencils, I know a lot of you have Prismacolor pencils. So maybe we'll, we'll see how far we get with just using the Prismacolor pencils in the feathers. Um, This cord in front of the camera this whole time. How annoying. In front of my DSLR camera. Just making space here. True Blue PC903. Sorry, that was probably very painful to watch because that took so long. PC903. That's what Vinny says all the time. <laughs> when I'm trying to get something right in the moment of whatever we're doing and I struggle, then he, he just says to me, oh my god, that was so painful to watch. <laughs> I get that a lot actually. It's like it could be simpler, but it's not. Okay, I'm getting a piece of plastic from my hand.
Okay, so we are working on this feather here. a little bit of it here actually I'm just gonna put this color where I see it as we go along We'll use a darker blue in the center. Let's use in Danthrone blue. And I'm typing into nothing. Okay, so now we're going to add this blue inside. It's very dark, so, but it is there. It is there. It's a beautiful color. Okay, then there's like a mustardy yellow color. We should just do this one as well. So coming back with the true blue over here.
This is just underpainting. I'm not worried about details. a golden rod color for the darker one so we'll take that out and for them it's like a yellow okay it is isn't it so Jasmine PC one oh one two like I can the circle needs to be a bit bigger it's quite a bit wider I made it very very small okay so before I use that yellow I'm gonna use my blue again my true blue PC 903 and just make this wider because this is actually a bit bigger quite a bit bigger There's a bit of blue here too. You only notice some things as you go along sometimes. This blue goes further too. Much further. have too little than too much okay now I'm using the Jasmine PC 1012 for some reason I always thought Jasmine would be like a purpley color not this color I don't know I'm going too far with the yellow I needn't go that far We will be adding some orange with this. And a brighter yellow, I think. This is not quite bright enough. And 
going to use Canary Yellow, PC916, and Golden Rodge, PC1034. So starting with the canary yellow. Those three colours already look so beautiful just on their own. Okay. Now I'm going to use the golden rod. I love this paper. It's so nice. I like the black and I like how um, opaque and bright the colors apply to the top of it. Um, let's Orange PC nine one eight.
let's apply some of these greens. So, Spring Green PC913. No, guys, that reference pick is for the $15 subscribers. Sorry. wouldn't be very fair to the $15 subs if I shared that one. Yeah, so the next fantasy art piece is, um, I, I named it the design My Rainbow Body but I created a meditating monk using a bunch of Siamese fighting fish. It looks really cool. And then the first video I put up for the $15 students is how to create that design in Clip Studio. And I gave them all the references to see if they can create their own concept using the same in images. I love the way that's looking already. We've barely done much. It looks so cool.
Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate that. Let's go crazy with this green and put it wherever it's needed all over this image. Remember the best part about this paper is if, you, if we end up blending too much, let's say, we can um, put the lighter colors over the top and we can also put a black pencil in between areas that we may have gone too light upon. So you ne never have to worry about how light or how dark you, you may layer because you are able to fix it if you are using sanded paper you're using this sanded paper, should I say. Thank you, camera's all good. Time flies, doesn't it? I've already been streaming for quite a while. Okay, I'm going to make myself a cup of tea and then I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're carrying on with the spring green. Peg is saying, I don't have black paper, but I do have a medium gray paper. Any thoughts about trying it instead? Yeah, use the gray, that's fine. It'll still be a nice color as a background.
It doesn't have to be a black background. I'm just choosing a black background. But a gray would be nice too. Any color would be nice, even white. Ivory blue. Albert's daughter. Hey, if you don't mind, could you give us your name so we know who you are? Um, Albert's daughter is asking, can you explain how you get the feathers to look so lifelike? So I haven't done much yet. I'm just applying colors and <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. I'm, I'm literally just um, paying attention to the direction of where it's going. But even at this stage, because we're doing the underpainting, those lines are going to disappear anyways. Because I still need to blend it with my solvents. But it's just a matter of layering carefully and... Um, paying attention to the flow, the direction of each feather. So when you break it down and work feather by feather, you're just paying attention to the direction of the strokes and then it naturally just starts looking real. So it's all about observing and taking your time. So observe a section and take your time applying your pencil to that section and remember that it looks bad before it starts looking good So I think I want to hold another two colors in my hand. I want to hold the orange and the yellow. So the orange that we used, I think we're going to use the goldenrod, which is on the list. So goldenrod PC1034 and spring green and canary yellow. So those are the three colors I'm going to hold in my hand. And these are the three colors I'm just going to jump between using um, as we progress through just doing a basic layer on each of the feathers. Let me just sharpen the yellow. If it helps you, print a reference in color that's the same size if you're working on a small size and then place it very close. So I will place mine right at the bottom of where I'm working so that I'm constantly looking at my reference and I'm not moving my head too far away from my drawing as I'm looking at my reference. So that's just something to keep in mind. The, the nearer your reference is to your your drawing, the easier it is for your eye to notice things. And it's especially easier if you are using the same size reference to your drawing because then you don't have to scale things. Because when you use a small reference and you're drawing it a lot bigger, you tend to scale incorrectly. So you think you're going big enough um, or small enough and then you don't scale it correctly. So if you've got the same size, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to to get those details right. <laughs> Luella says, 
I don't think Sheldon's work goes through the ugly stage. It does! The chocolates are a good example. I still haven't finished the chocolates, by the way. But the chocolates that I've been doing for the Colored Pencil magazine, they looked awful before they started looking any good. This doesn't look awful yet. Because it doesn't look awful because of how bright the colors are in contrast to the black paper. So that's why it looks so pretty, because the colors look so bright. But we'll see what happens when I apply solvent. Maybe it won't be the case anymore. Actually, another color I'm going to hold in my hand is that blue that we used. So those are the main colors in here. Is these four colors is mainly what we're using for pretty much all of it, really. So I'm going to use the true blue. I'm going to be changing between the true blue, the goldenrod, spring green, and canary yellow. So I'm just following along from my reference each little feather and putting a base color down of what I can see, just the main color. I'm not too worried about overlapping um, feathers right now because we can do that later. Because the beauty about the sanded paper, as I said before, is that you can layer your lighter colors over the top. So, when it comes to all these overlapping pieces, we can do that later. We don't have to get that right now. Whereas if you're using watercolor paper, it's a little harder because you have to pay attention to those because you can't necessarily apply a light color over the top of a dark color as easily. I'm also in an extremely relaxed mood, so I feel like that also comes across. I feel like I have a lot of patience right now, and I could sit here all day. some water to that. It's too hot. 
We have some peppermint and green tea. I'm trying to lay off the caffeine again for a while. No worries, Diane. Thank you for joining us. Have a good day. I think instead of black between the feathers, I'd use the indigo blue. So using indigo blue PC901. Just some areas I went a little bit too far.
what I want to do, yeah, I want to blend this in to see what it looks like. Just to show you guys the process of the underpainting. And then um, I think, because we've been streaming, um, not too bad, an hour and a half. We'll see how much longer we'll stream for. But I might go ahead and finish the underpainting on my own, because otherwise the stream's going to be too long. Or, I know you guys don't mind, I might just put my headphones in, because I know I'm getting pretty quiet. <laughs> I have an audiobook I'm dying to listen to, so I might put my headphones in, but whenever I'm changing colors or doing something new, I can carry on talking about it. I will admit that is something I've been missing. <laughs> While I stream all the li live stream hours, I'm not... Um, I almost feel like I'm, I'm not getting the information that I usually get through audiobooks or... Um, I don't know, informational sources that I usually do. So this is going to make everything look super blurry now that we're blending this in. But it will show you that we probably do need extra coverage, a couple of layers to make the brightness of these colors really stand out against the black. So this is where it's going to reach its ugly stage. <laughs> it's going to go from pretty to ugly to pretty. Because the underpainting is not detail. It's just establishing colors. Establishing values, should I say. Use my flat brush, I think. Honey, Noah, stop it. You just do not learn far out. Sorry, I hope that wasn't too loud. <laughs> Why are you doing Honey, come here. Come here. Honey, come. Why are you digging? Look at your ears. You know you're doing the wrong thing. Lie down. Good girl. When they're being naughty, they pull their, ear, their ears back in a certain way. And then they'll do like this, this bow or like cower. And then she'll like wag her tail in excitement. But I think it's just because she's really sorry. They end up looking so cute when they know they're doing something wrong. But still, it drives me crazy. They are like toddlers. <laughs> I 
And she knows. She knows she's doing the wrong thing. That's the thing. How do you get her out of it if she knows? <laughs> ah, Jamie. <laughs> so this is really dulling it down, which means that I really am going to have to layer a lot more to really bring that color out. Where's your sister? She's too quiet. Taylor! Taylor! Hey, what are you doing? Hmm? She wasn't outside, so I guess she was fine. Bye, Bob. <laughs> uh, Jamie said, yes, I did. I saw the black curly dog that you're drawing. So with a photo like that, put it in PicMonkey and enhance it a lot. So change the contrast or the brightness um, so that it, it's very very contrasting and it will bring out the highlights and bring back and further push back the real dark shadows and then you would be able to see the highlights a lot clearer um, or you'd be able to see the direction of the curly fur a little more clearly so that's the key with something that's black you want to have the, the usual reference but you also want to have a black and white reference with extreme contrast and you it will show you a bit more than for example that black and white image that we use for for this so this is actually supposed to be completely black like in the re original reference but what I did is I changed it to black and white and I enhanced the brightness and the contrast and it shows me everything so you see this would in the original reference would be completely black you won't see this in the original reference or this over here but if you enhance it like this you see those details a lot clearer if that makes sense pick monkey is what you do on the computer so i don't do that on my phone you have to do that on the computer Although you could create, um, I'm sure with the usual filters that you have on your phone, you should be able to create, change it to black and white and change the contrast and brightness.
think I might just go pop the aircon on because it is starting to cook in this background. I'm sure you could find a way to do it on your phone, Jamie. There's so many photo apps and filter apps out there. You guys can get pick monkey on your phones well there you go i haven't tried it on my phone so i didn't actually know <laughs> cool thank you I'm just going to turn the aircon on and then I might grab a piece of fruit. Okay, bye Chantal. You're probably off already, but thank you for joining us.
think um, any final fixative is going to dull it down a smidge, unfortunately. So the same, I use the brush and pencil final fixative on my jellyfish. And it's like it enhanced the black a little, but it made the pinks of the jellyfish subside more too. So it's, yeah. With colored pencil work, you don't really have to use a final fixative. With pastels you do, I think, if you don't want it to smudge. But with colored pencils, you don't have to. You could literally just varnish it. And I don't find that the golden varnishes affect the color in any way. If anything, it actually makes the color appear brighter. But it didn't affect the color too badly with my jellyfish and background enough for me to not want to use it again. But yeah, it creates a... Um, even though it's the final fixative and not the textured fixative, it's almost like it still adds a bit of texture. So if you don't want that, um, then you'd have to use a smoother final fixative. Don't use the brush and pencil final fixative. And yeah, that's right, the brush and pencil final fixative is really meant for sanded paper. Okay, so that is pretty much what the underpainting is. So now I'm just going to continue it on with the rest of the feathers. Yep.
So these feathers here, or these highlights <laughs> that I've created with the outline are far too dark. Because this is going to get really dark as we keep going. So I'm going to use my kneaded eraser and see if I can just make them die down a little. the green here I'm just going to lightly apply the spring green because when we blend it with the solvent it really dies down a lot so um, this is pretty much what I'm going to do for all the feathers over here coming towards this section which is the darkest so I will use a darker green I think so I'll use the Peacock blue, <laughs> perfect. PC1027, let me just test that here. Yes, that's perfect. So I'm going to use a peacock blue and I'll probably use a greener color with that too. So peacock blue and cobalt turquoise. No, 
I need a greener one than that. So maybe grass green. Yes, there we go. So peacock blue and grass green is what I'd use for these darker areas here. So grass green PC 909 and peacock blue. Peacock blue PC one oh two seven. Okay. So that's how I'm what I'm gonna keep working on in this section. Do you guys feel okay with doing the rest on your own or do you want me to keep going live? The rest of the underpainting, not the detailing. Here's some of the grass green over here because that's also going into the darker areas. No worries, Sandra. Good night. Hope you have sweet dreams and a good rest. If you guys start doing this tutorial along with this video at some point, you'll find that the more you do it, the less you're going to be looking up at my video. It will become an automatic process because you'll get the feel for it. So you'd be by that stage now already. Um, if you're watching this video later and trying this so you shouldn't need too much more guidance from me um, just in terms of the underlayering part anyways so for this I'm, I'm gonna just shade in some of these colors so I'll show you how I do this section before I call it a day for part one and I'm just gonna continue on with this in my own time a little bit later today
Uh, these feathers here have more of the golden rod. Just so that you guys know what to do with these areas that are quite dark, you still want to keep them pretty dark. It must be like a gradation of dark into lighter colors. Then using the grass green PC909, I'm going to add the green over the top of that blue that I just put down. Some beautiful colors. See what an effect that has already. Actually, I'm pretty close to being done with the underpainting part anyways. May as well keep going. Uh, Jamie's saying, uh, if we do the peacock drawing, can we put it in for commentary another month or does it need to be by February's end? Um, you ha as long as you have it in the month before or the month after, so January, February or March, you can enter it in during the March one. So, yep. You can enter it in March, but no later than the March one. So, actually just enter it once it's done, because once it's done, it's still... Because the, the monthly challenge is just drawing any of my tutorials. And it can be a tutorial I did years ago, or a tutorial I did recently. So once you finish with it, then just enter it. And then it will just fall into that month that you enter it into. Then that'll be fine. <laughs> Tracy says I wasn't going to do this, but you have inspired me. Yes, Tracy, draw it. Draw it. This one's very fun and it's not all that hard. I mean, look how far we've gotten. <laughs> it looks pretty amazing already. And we only started it today. And this is an A4 piece of paper. So this is nine, I don't know what it is. It is 
11 and a half inches by seven and a half inches in size. So 11 by seven. So that's a pretty decent size for getting this far. So I reckon the next tutorial will be the last one. So this will only be three parts. Well, the first part wasn't even drawing this, really. The first part was more about deciding on a black surface. Okay, now I'm going to blend that in. And then that will be our underpainting. I love this black paper. It's so nice. I think I'm gonna work on a black surface like this way more often. But only on this paper. <laughs> I won't use any other black surface, I don't think.
it. That is the underpainting done. That was really, really quick for feathers. You would have thought that... I, I actually would have thought that it would have taken a fair bit longer doing this with feathers. But that's all we need for the underpainting and then we get to add the detail. So maybe what I'll do is I'll do the detail just of one feather. Um, let's do this one right over here. And then we can see what that looks like. And then that's how we will be working on our next part. And we've only used Prismacolor pencils thus far. So now you just work feather by feather. Well, that's going to be the idea. the canary yellow. Now I'd like to use the true blue. getting confused with the feather just above it. And then the green, the spring green, just sharpen that. like to use some of the orange PC 918 canary yellow and then indigo blue nice and sharp so we'll put in that little center part of the feather on some of the in-between areas that are a little bit darker. It's also going to give us the shape.
top of the feather has the dark indigo blue. And that is how we will work each feather. Look at that. It's beautiful. It looks amazing. If it needs to be more pigmented, you can add a brighter bit of something on top of it. Just make sure to follow the direction. Excuse me. And there we have a feather. I don't feel like we need to blend that with solvent at all. It looks, it's got the texture that I like. And the texture of the paper isn't affecting it too much. I don't feel like. I think that feather looks really nice. Let me zoom in for you guys. This is a nice close view of it. So that's what we worked on today. Whoa, why is that so bright? That's the default settings there. It's a little bit better. Cool, so that is what we did. That's the detailed feather there. And then the rest next to it. So you can see it's very blurry, these sections here. And that's just what the typical underpainting is like. But if we work each feather like that, it's going to start looking really, really pretty. So that is it. So that is the underpainting. The black is still really black. I don't know why my hand looks so pink. <laughs> the black is still really black. The pigment is looking really, really nice. And... I love it. I think it's going to turn out to be a very, very pretty drawing. And I'm finding this, excuse me, I'm finding this to actually be a lot easier than the jellyfish that we did, um, where we made the, ba the background black ourselves. So I'm enjoying this very much. So it's up to you when it comes to blending, like I don't feel like I need to blend that feather so I'm going to leave it. But if you want to blend it more or if you feel like you need to um, blend it all in and then apply the third layer and use that layer as your detailing, you can do that. It's really up to you. You need to have a play around and see how you feel about it. But I just did the detail in that one feather to sh give you an example of what's coming up next because I think in the next tutorial we should be able to finish this entire thing. But this, the rest of it, is what I call the underpainting, and it went pretty quick, so I'm quite happy with the result. Alrighty, thanks guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!